Hey everyone, I'm Brianna from Boom and welcome to Boom Chat. Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with C.S. Picot and Johanna the Mad to discuss the next graphic novel in their GLAAD Award nominated series, Fence Rise. Excitement is in the air as Nicholas and his friends celebrate their coveted invitation to the Halverton training camp. They immediately come face to face with the best fencing teams in the country and Nicholas struggles as he suffers defeat after defeat by an old enemy. Will a new addition to a rival team bring Nicholas closer to the rest of the King's Row team and awaken the resilience within that he needs to prevail? And then there's Seiji, who, in contrast to Nicholas, remains unchallenged and let down by the camp. With Seiji's goal to learn instead of win stuck in his head, will Nicholas step up to pose a real challenge to Seiji and maybe even help grow their friendship as a result? Okay, 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 all right. So, Johanna, Kat, I am so excited about this. We've got like our good boys back. Oh my gosh, I'm so thrilled. So I need to know what excited you both about returning to the series and continuing this journey of the students from King's Row. I'm gonna say, Kat, we're gonna start with you. All right, well, the thing that, well, there was two things that excited me and just sent me to the next level with, with this one. The first is that this is the um, installment where the universe sort of opens up and widens. So we get to meet other boys teams um, and the cast kind of explodes um, and the boys take their first step, you know, towards the state championship. So it was so exciting to meet new characters um, and explore new um, dynamics. And then the other thing that was so exciting for me is that um, this is also the issue where um, some of the relationships and some of the romances really take them first really meaningful steps. So um, it was really, really fun to um, dive into the romantic side of things as well. Oh, I'm so excited. Johanna, what was most exciting for you? Oh, definitely when I got the notice that I had to work on new character designs. I was so looking forward to that because just as all that Kat said just now about this, like the whole fans universe expanding more, getting to know new uh, new new characters, uh, the new schools, new with the uniforms for the boys and everything. This was, I think this whole volume was kind of something we both were really looking forward. We had been talking about getting to this specific part in the story for so long, because of course, everything before that was super fun and exciting, but we also wanted to see the boys with uh, new schools and having to, to go in matches with them and see how that turns out. So yeah, definitely the new schools for me was the most exciting part of this new volume. Do you have uh, a maybe. favorite character design for the new of the new characters, Johanna? Because oh, I have oh. a favorite. <laughs> I loved loved working on the Halberton boys. I I love <laughs> the 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 three new schools. Like they are so cute, but definitely the Halberton boys. They are my favorites, and they are so fun. To, to draw their expressions, their their uniforms. I love them. Yeah, definitely my my favorites and yours. Um, mine was the Italian um, van. <laughs> he, um, your Honor is just, uh, when you all see his character design, you're just gonna lose it. He is amazing. And he, I think he has the longest hair of any of the characters. The hair. Just yeah. Incredible mane of hair. Um, the hair is so good. Is amazing, yeah. Oh, amazing. All right. So Kat, I have to ask you, what inspired you to take the story to the Halverton training camp? And what do we think King's Row is going to take away from this experience? I think when I watch sports stories or really even um, any competitive uh, story, um, so it could be a sports story like Haikyuu or it could be a movie like The Karate Kid or um, my favorite part is always the training montage. The training montage is like so great. You get to see the characters um, come into their own. And so um, we've, we've seen the characters working as individuals and now we want to see them train as a team. So um, it's not just about improving their skills, but it's also about how do they learn to work together when they're all so 
different um and um as well as a chance to get to kind of show off their mad skills it's also like a chance to deepen the relationships and dive into um some of that personal stuff so that was um the reasoning behind the Halberton training camp oh I love it I can't wait I can't wait for everybody to see this camp to see all of the different styles of training and the things that they're going to learn coming out of it I thought it was very very clever I really I really liked the spin that you took on it where it's not just about well we'll we'll let them read it and find out right yeah, yeah. And um, I did a lot of, so the, the coach that I work with, um, uh, people watching this might not know, but um, I work very closely with an EPA coach um, to choreograph a lot of the fight scenes and so on. And, um, and he also um, happens to be uh, one of the coaches that trains the national team here. Um, and so obviously attends um, and coaches at the national training camps. So we did a lot of kind of background on what, what does a fencing camp actually look like? Um, even though like some of the things you see might seem over the top, a lot of it is drawn from his actual experiences in those um, national camps. So um, that will hopefully be something to look out for and enjoy as well. Oh, I thought it was so fun. I was like, oh, wow, this is, this is so, like it was, I don't want to give anything away, but the drills and the things that they had to do were just so different from what they usually have to do in their training. And so it was just like, it was a lot of the same, but very different and like new and, and done in a very fresh way. So I thought that that was super fun. And I'm very excited for folks to pick that up and get a different side of all of the fencing. So I'm super stoked on that. Um, Johanna. I want to know, because we've already talked a little bit about the other training camps, but I want to know with all of like these new and exciting faces and these new, these new characters, what went into creating the character designs for the other schools teams? Oh, definitely. I used my biggest inspiration ever, which is just anime tropes. Yeah, I, I'm such a big Amazing. fan of <laughs> I'm such a big fan of anime in general. I've I watched so many series that after some time and after a certain amount of, of anime you watch, you start getting the idea of these tropes. You you start recognize, recognizing them in each new series or each new manga you start reading or whatever. And so I think that's also one of the things that makes me uh love so much working with Kat because she she also knows those tropes so well that whenever I get her descriptions for any new character I instantly like I know what she's going for and I start picturing it in my head and I'm like yeah he's gonna look like this he's gonna have hair like this his attitude his expressions and so every single time I just send them to Kat and she's like yeah definitely we got we got this this is a character so yeah definitely anime is just <laughs> my biggest um tool for for uh helping me with with um moods for the expressions in the characters especially with so many new boys because there they were many new faces to work on but <laughs> it was it was awesome to work on all of them because i i really tried to um, give them each their own expressions, their own set of expressions. So you can, even though, for example, they don't, they are not like Nicholas, who's the protagonist and gets the most uh, stage time. Uh, people can get to know. Oh, so this is this is this new character's kind of like personality or or what he likes, what he dislikes. Uh, so yeah, that's that's something I'm very excited for people to see to to see if they can kind of get the grasp of that. I love yeah, that. I was, okay. I was blown away by um, your ability as a character designer when I saw just the, the huge range of different types, even though there's a ton of new characters, like they're each very distinct. And um, I watch a lot of sports anime and I'm really familiar with the moment that the artist just like gives up. It's like, um, then everyone's like a twin. There's like 10 sets of twins on the team because they just want it. They can't be bothered coming up with a new character design or whatever. And then, um, 
but like every Johanna, every single one of the characters was like so distinct, has such a personality that just like shines thank out of their character you, design. It's thank you, thank you. The personalities you choose for the, for all of them, it just works. They, it it makes them even more like I don't know to shine more, you know, than to contrast with Nicholas with the whole King's Row team. So I think it's the mix of both. <laughs> I love this. Oh my gosh. Okay. So one more thing about the art, Johanna. Mm -hmm. So Kat, you said you get to work with an Epe coach, but Johanna, how are you drawing all of the fencing? Like, what do you use <laughs> as a visual aid? What are your references? Like, do you just like go and try to find people who are fencing? Like how, how are you doing this and making it look so good? <laughs> Thank you. So most of the time, whenever Kat gets to work with the coach and, and she already kind of like gets the idea of the of the poses she wants for each panel or or that kind of thing, she sends me the pictures. She takes pictures of the coach and and also she tells me, oh, this should work this way because sometimes, for example, uh, Nicholas is left-handed. So sometimes the, the, the people that Kat's working with, they are, I don't know, right-handed. So I have to make those little tweaks. But as when when Kat cannot get that reference with working with the coach, um, we both look for <laughs> for YouTube videos. The problem with that is that they are just too quick. So I have mm. to slow down the <laughs> the video references and I have to like pause like a thousand times until I'm, I'm like, oh, that's what she wants. It's fine. I got it. I got this. And so I start working from that. But yeah, I think I would say 90% of the time it's thanks to, to Kat's pictures. They are great references. I think that that is so amazing. And I love that it's like this whole teamwork that's happening. Because I was wondering, I was like, okay, one of you has to have some type of experience with fencing. Have either of you ever fenced before? Yeah, I fenced through high school and into university. So that, that was my background and why I was really drawn to like the idea of doing it for the comic. Um, but I, I had given it up after uni. I, I had, a, you know, I, I would watch at the Olympics, but pretty much that was the only sort of part of fencing that I'd still follow. But then I went back um, to fencing when we started to write this comic together. Um, just so that I could refresh my rusty skills and um and but usually it's not me fencing for the reference photos so we'll get some of the um students that my coach coaches to fence out the scenes and film or photograph them um but that yes exactly the problem that Johanna um referenced which is that the protagonist Nicholas is left-handed which when I came up with it I thought that was like so cool because in fencing you know a left-hander has an enormous advantage um, mm -hmm. because they're rare and you get very used to fencing right-handed people, but uh, so, you know, you're not as used to a left-hander. Um, and then I realized why no one, no one does this in sports comics. It's because <laughs> it's hard to find references or even people that can fence with their left hand. Um, so, um, so, you know, but we, yeah, we do our best and Johanna's really good at sometimes like figuring out what a pose will look like if it's flipped. Amazing. I don't think I can do that. I can barely handle looking at my Zoom screen if it's not mirrored and then freaking out. So like, well done on being able to figure that out. <laughs> Thank not. you. It, it takes a bit of concentration, but you can do it. You can get there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Kat, you and I have to talk because this yeah. book, ends on a cliffhanger okay <laughs> and i cannot wait to see what happens next so without like giving away too much where may this story be going or leading to and like what can we kind of maybe hope to see for the future of the king's row team in this new story well the um the romance at the heart of the story. I think the relationship at the heart of Fence is the relationship between Seiji and Nicholas. Um, you know, it's, um, they're such complementary uh, characters. They spark so well off each other. And um, we've seen them clash at the beginning where they were 
um, epic rivals. We've seen a kind of um, uh, antagonistic relationship spring up between them. And then we've seen that there's things that they like about each other and they're learning from each other. And this is the issue where um, I think that they take the next step uh, towards, um, you know, their burgeoning, uh, how can I say without spoilers, their burgeoning, deepening relationship Friendship. with each other, French. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, and and some, maybe something more. Um, and so, um, and so, you know, I hope that everyone is excited to see um, them continue on their journey, but they're sort of not the only ones whose relationships are developing. There's quite a few characters amongst our boys that are um, uh, sort of moving towards, uh, well, you know, deepening their feels and their um, relations. So um, as well as that, the team is coming together, um, learning to work as a team and taking their first steps towards the state championship. All right, I'll I'll take this answer for now. For now, Kat, <laughs> I see you. I need to know what happens with these good, good boys. All right, Kat, Johanna, thank you both so much for your time today. It has been so lovely chatting with the both of you. And for those of you watching at home, be sure to pick up Fence Rise, available online and in stores now. And if you want to stay up to date on all of our amazing content, remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click that notification button.